Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie Bonomo. Hi if you're new here or hey if you've been here before. And today we are here with another monthly wrap up where I talk about the books I read, the things I wrote, and some random personal tidbits about my life. We will make this short and sweet. Let's just jump into the books I read in the month of July. So in the month of July, I actually didn't read a physical like hardcover book or softcover really. I read ebooks and audiobooks. So we'll start with the first audiobook that I finished, which was Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. So this is a book about a kind of space culture where there are different levels of houses in this planet system and you are following the characters from the ninth house, which is the house of necromancy. And essentially, like, during the plot of the book, like, they have to go towards one of the upper surface levels and kind of come together to this, like, grand council in order for each of the houses to kind of take their place in the court system. And that's probably the most terrible <laughs> description of this book, but the best you're going to get for me because, unfortunately, this book was a real big miss for me. I don't really know what it was about this book, but I had such a hard time following along and I, I think it possibly was just the writing style for me. I really felt disconnected to the characters. I didn't really feel like the world was fleshed out and as I kind of gave you my overview of this book, I really struggled to even imagine how these systems were working and how like the houses were working. So like I said, we're in we're following the characters from the ninth house, but there's a lot of other characters that are going on, but I never really understood what was happening and it's been about a month now that I've read it. I finished it like the 3rd of July and I have not thought of it since and it's really actually hard for me to even dredge up how I felt while I was reading it other than disconnected. So it's really unfortunate for me. I was really excited for the premise of lesbian necromancers in space and it just kind of fell flat. I also thought the book suffered from the main characters acting tough and dirty to kind of have shock value. But very similar to another book I reviewed last year as one of my worst reads of 2020, cursing and vulgarity does not make good character development of its own accord. You need more substance, you need to be showing how the character interacts and does things, not just by saying them, but also by doing them. And unfortunately, the main character that you followed, Gideon, just kind of curses and comes off with things all the time. And sometimes they just feel super out of place or almost like they're acting like my 12 year old clients who think they're tough <laughs> and really it's just raunchy to be raunchy and for shock value and not really to add anything more to the plot. So unfortunately that was a, a kind of a big turnoff for me with the main character and again you're stuck in their head the entire book so sometimes that got frustrating and I just don't think the world building was enough for me because I had a really hard time understanding the magic system, the political system, and just the world. I had a hard time picturing it in general because I didn't really get a good sense of it. I also think someone else pointed out this when we, I was talking about it, but I agree that I feel like there were a lot of info dumps, but not enough actually being talked about in the info dump to even give me a good sense of what was happening. So you would get like an info dump and then like nothing and then an info dump and then nothing, but then it never, they never seemed to connect either. It was weird, but unfortunately this book was a miss for me. The next book that I finished in the month of July was Pestilence by Laura Balassa. So this book is the first in a four part series that follows the four horsemen as they come to earth and are about to wreak havoc on the humans. So the first book follows Pestilence as he comes and our main character Sarah tries to stop him by killing him where he stands so he can't spread plague to other people. But Pestilence has already been through this several times and decides to take Sarah as his prisoner to show the other humans that nothing can stop him and make a mockery of her. This is a bit more of an erotic fantasy and to be honest, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought the book was pretty well paced. I thought the writing was pretty good. And to be fair, I thought there was going to be more sexy scenes in the book, but there wasn't any sexy scenes until like 75 or 80% in. So that actually kind of made sense based on their character progression. 
And personally, I liked that because a lot of times when I read these type of like fantasy with some spice, they're just shoved down your throat and happening so much. And they're not always justified either, in my opinion. So this actually felt warranted. And they did have a few like tension scenes, but nothing ever like happened until about 80% of the book. So that was kind of refreshing. I just overall really liked the book. <laughs> I think the author did a really good job at kind of showing the pestilence as like a godlike creature but not quite god and not quite human and as he talked with the main character more and got to know her and the human ways kind of started really struggling with his humanity and godlikeness because that was something he never had to think about before like he was sent to earth to do a job and now he has to question everything so overall it was a really really fun time it took me a while i actually started this book i think back in january so if you've come here from one of my wrap-ups i've probably mentioned i was reading this but while i was on vacation i ended up finishing it and it was a good vacation read it was fast paced and overall it was well done now the other books in the series do follow different characters so they obviously follow a different horseman and with a different romantic lead so i hope that i will see pestilence and sarah mentioned in the second book when i continue but i think it's a good indicator that i'm going to continue the series because so far i liked this book the next book that i finished was slave warrior queen by morgan rice I believe this is also a self-published book and it's a pretty short one. It was only about six hours on audio and I think it's like 200 some pages, maybe 250. So it's a very quick book. So that's why I decided to pick this up while I was on vacation so that I can just have something to breeze through while I was sitting on the beach or poolside. So this book actually is interesting because this is another one where even though I actually read this even quicker, I've already kind of forgotten about it, which is sad because it's just really not that memorable in the end. Um, but I also don't think it was bad because while I was reading it, I was very intrigued by the premise. Essentially, you end up following two main characters. You follow a 17 year old girl named Saris and Saris is essentially sold into, I guess, type of slavery by her mother without her father knowing because her parents and family are very poor and they need the money. So they sell Saris and she obviously does not like that and ha tries to escape. And as she does actually escape, she runs into another character, Prince Thanos. Prince Thanos is also a point of view and he is kind of trying to turn the civilization into something better because he doesn't really agree with how his parents run things and doesn't really like all the injustices that are happening in his world and like while he's out and about i believe he ends up running into saris and employs her to kind of help him with like these competitions and like training and stuff like that and then there's like a bunch of other stuff that happens <laughs> so they end up like kind of meeting and being together in a way um but yeah so th there's a it's, it's a story and a lot happens in the short amount of pages you get, but also I think that's a downfall because there are, I think, some time jumps and that's where like it started to lose me a little bit because it would just be getting used to something and then it would time jump a little bit or then it would bring up, like at one point there was another love interest that was supposedly introduced in the beginning of the book or I, or it didn't actually happen. I don't think it did. I don't remember it, but when that love interest came back into the story to kind of have like a love triangle i was kind of like over it i didn't like it at all because i was just like we just got this character introduced and remember it's only 250 pages so not a lot of time for a love triangle to happen in that amount and especially because it was like halfway through the book by the time the second one came back so yeah it was just kind of complicated and overall i i would probably say it's middle of the ground for me i did not hate it but I also didn't love it. I don't think I would continue in the series, but I think there are three books at least and it's the Of Crowns and Glory series. So I think like if you wanted something quick and you like like high YA fantasy, this would probably be a quick book to read. And like I said, it's not bad. It's just not my cup of tea. I, there wasn't enough stakes for me and there wasn't enough world building and development for the characters and the world and the plot in order to satisfy what I like reading. So for that reason, it was good, but nothing that I will remember in a couple weeks, I'm sure, unfortunately. And the last book that I read in the month of July was Pivot, The Only Move That Matters is Your Next One by Jenny Blake. 
This is a book I had to read for my career counseling class, essentially because I had to kind of read a career development book and determine if I would recommend it to clients in the future. So I decided to pick up this one. I'm not gonna lie, I picked this one because it was shorter and I am really hit or miss with self-help books. And this book wasn't the worst I've ever read. This is essentially following a woman who is in the business and entrepreneur field. And I will say if you are in that field setting and you're looking to try to make the most out of your career, this is probably a very solid book for you. As someone who is in the psychology field, the therapy field, I don't think I can apply this to many of my own or my client situations just because there's a lot of risk taking involved in big business, even though this book tries to talk to you about minimizing your risks there's still a lot that has to go into this. But basically the author is a career coach at this point and does offer a ton of suggestions on how you can kind of put your brain and all your positive qualities, your strengths, and like everything that you wanna do in your life down onto pieces of paper and like kind of sort through that way. So I think those exercises in this book were really well done and partly I agree with a lot of them too, because as I've been doing my career psych and just in general, I've been doing therapy for a few years now, those are exercises that I would 100% give to my clients. So I think those exercises are solid and I think you could do them with any of your field. But as the book progressed, <laughs> it was very clear that this is for business people and like big business at that, like where you are gonna be like trying to change your career directory and make like a big splash because a lot of it at some points, like she talked about how she like made a bunch of plans and contingencies on like, okay, if I'm gonna make this big change, like this is what I'm gonna do. Like I'm gonna put this amount of money forward first and then I'm gonna get like a loan and then I can dip into my savings and then I can dip into my assets. And obviously like not everyone is gonna have those, especially in like poorer areas. So to kind of say that like you have to have this contingency plan where you might have someone who literally is like, I have a thousand dollars to my name and that's it. Like I don't own a home, I don't own a car and I don't have all these things. It is kind of discouraging when you're listening to it and going, well, what if you don't have those? How else can you do it? And there are some things that are good takeaways as far as like she does try to say how you can break things down. But like I said, there's definitely a lot of risk to be following this method. And I think like personally for me, the only thing that I really liked about it were those very nice like journal prompt type of suggestions versus the big life changes that you might need to do. The other thing is as a therapist, this doesn't really talk about any of the emotional sides of things and how these big changes can impact you, your family, your well-being. So I almost wish that that was also included because if you fail, which it doesn't ever talk about the fact is if you fail, how is that going to emotionally impact you? So I would have liked to see that as well. And lastly, there definitely wasn't any statistics as far as like, oh, so it's like this percent of people, like when they've done X, Y, Z have gotten these results. Like there was none of that. So it was really just listening to one person tell their story and give their own anecdotes. And occasionally she would kind of share some client stories as well. But there was like no actual statistics, which I think like if I wanted to do my due diligence in recommending a book, I would want a book that had more statistics for it because I like that practical. Like it's good to have like the manifesting dreaming side of things, but I also want that tangible real side as well. And this book kind of swayed more to that manifesting side. So overall, I think I could, I can definitely give this book to other people who I think would benefit from. But if you're not trying to like be an entrepreneur and like pave your own way, I don't think you're going to get as much out of this book as someone who's in that field. And there you have it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of July. So anyway, let's talk about the things I wrote in the month of July. As I already mentioned back in June, I did not participate in Camp Nano and I'm grateful that I didn't set a goal because I would not have met it. I know I would have set it way too high. And in my back of my head, I wanted to finish my read through for my prophecy project, which is my adult fantasy. And I did not do that. I have read through it though. <laughs> I'm currently on chapter 15 out of 40, which personally for me, I feel really good about. I also think if I just sit down a couple nights upcoming, I can actually get through my read through and start my third draft edits because so far in the first 
15 chapters, I don't have any major uphauls. Like I have to add a little bit more to like the world building, but a lot of them aren't too bad. Like I'm pretty proud of what I've written so far and I'm amazed at how much I have already in this book for only 15 chapters. The part that I think is gonna be a little bit more again is gonna be the second half. Like the second half of act two and act three, I think are gonna probably need the most attention just because that was what I overhauled from the first draft. I had put so much words into the second half <laughs> of this book. So we'll see how I feel when I get there. But so far, I'm really excited. I'm almost halfway through the book. And like I said, as soon as I can sit down and get this out, I think I'm going to do great. And that gives me fuel because there are a few writing experiments I would like to try and film soon. So that should give me some motivation to actually finish it. And then if we're on a good streak, maybe I will be able to get started if not finished with my third draft so wish me luck guys that's where i'm at prophecy project also to keep updated as i mentioned a few months ago i had submitted a few things and was kind of waiting on the wind to see where they went and i got back from one of the magazines i submitted poems to and we got rejected <laughs> i wish it was like an acceptance because i would be so excited but we got rejected and honestly this is the third time I've gotten rejected from this magazine and I just don't know if our style jives. I mean I think my style is similar to some of the things they publish but since they keep rejecting me and some of the pieces they've rejected I feel is like some of my best poems I've ever written <laughs> so it could just be a difference in taste and that's okay. But I do think I might try to start opening up to some other magazines. There's a ton or, that are out there and I've actually been saving them. So we're just going to take this defeat and go somewhere else. And we're that's going to be how it is. <laughs> so I'm not going to be too upset about it. It is what it is. But I do want to keep you guys updated because, you know, this is real life. Rejections are a thing and we move on. <laughs> so I'm on to the next. And my actual true final update is that I decided to go back to Project Mermaid, which if you don't know, that was my NaNoWriMo 2020 project was to write a dark mermaid fantasy and or a satire, but I ended up mostly focusing on the dark mermaid. So I decided to go back to it while I was on vacation and I realized that not writing in that for nine months has killed me. I am just so lost and I knew where I wanted to go and I still know where the story's going, but all the little nuances of like writing every day and really powering through that book, I've, I've really lost sense of where I am with that project. So unfortunately, I think I'm going to table that one for now because I am going to need to read through it and then keep adding to the story. And that was kind of a bummer. I was hoping I would just be able to pick right back up, but I definitely... I put it off way too long. <laughs> so that is on me. I will say the parts that I reread to try to reorient myself, which was like the last two chapters, I think it's such a solid book. <laughs> like I hope one day this could be published because man, I was so impressed by my first draft in those pages. So I know that's subjective because it's just me and no one else has read them, but I, I was very impressed. So I hope that when I do get back into it, like that book will just come and we can finish it and that I'll get somewhere because so far the story is pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all the writing updates I have and I can just briefly talk about some personal things, but really there's not much going on in my personal life. <laughs> um, I did mention in the month of July, I went on vacation. We did a bachelorette party in the Dominican Republic. And if you've been in a few of the lives I've been in, then you may know that I've alluded to the fact that it was both like a good time and also a disaster of a trip. And there's a lot of things that happen, both like really good positive memories and some of the worst memories I've ever had. <laughs> so um, right now, I'm not really going to talk openly about it. Um, I wasn't the only one involved. So I do think that I want to respect everyone and just kind of leave it like it wasn't time to be had. And maybe one day if like, you know, we're doing like a Q&A or like I want to share a story time, maybe once I distance myself from it, like I will be able to share but for now, just know that it was such an interesting time and uh, I really needed another vacation after I came back from that vacation. So that's all I'm going to say. For the same wedding though, we also 
came back from vacation, had a week to prepare and had our bridal shower because that was the only day we can actually schedule the bridal shower due to everyone rescheduling from 2020. But the bridal shower actually went so much better than the bachelorette party, thankfully. We really didn't have any hitches. The food was delicious. The place was beautiful. And we did so many like little things to make this like unique and wonderful and kind of like we went like with a fairy garden theme, like a, a very classy fairy garden. <laughs> Um, and it came together really nicely. So I was really happy about that. And otherwise, I don't really think anything else has changed. I am still game streaming over on Twitch and that is linked down below. I actually streamed Among Us for the first time and uh, that was really fun. I also usually stream Apex and I have been streaming through my computer. So it's a much more aesthetically pleasing process on Twitch now that I'm getting the hang of it. So if you are interested in gaming and chatting, I definitely suggest following me on Twitch. And I'm at like 33 followers over there. And as soon as I get to 50 and like all the requirements, I could get affiliated one day, but I'm not really too worried about that. I just like to do it. So I don't have a schedule right now. I just kind of stream whenever I can. And otherwise, uh, throughout July, July was the first full month that I had my classes. And to be honest, they went really well. I really caught up before I went on vacation. And as of the day I'm filming this, I only have my last week of classes due, which they're due on the 15th of August. So I'm probably going to power through them because it's only like a few chapters to read and do my quiz. And then I'm done with my summer classes. So even though I had so much anxiety through that, I made it. And then we are going into the fall semester. It's going to be a pretty heavy workload, but I am ready to get it over with so I can put this behind me. The one thing I will say is that as much as I love learning, I do like learning on my own time. And once I'm done with school, I don't think I would be going back. <laughs> I don't think I could do it anymore. I am totally down to do like Skillshare. I'm down to do like masterclass, like that type of learning, even going to like trainings for work. I love learning. I just think I'm going to be overdoing the school thing. Once I get my license, once I'm done with all of this, I'm just going to live <laughs> and vibe. <laughs> so yeah, by the time my next update comes up, like my August wrap up, I will be able to let you know how I did in my first two classes back to grad school. So yeah, that's my life. So anyway, I think that's really all I have. This is probably gonna be much longer than I anticipated, but I hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you guys did in the month of July. Did you do anything fun? Did anything exciting or crazy happen? What kind of books did you read? Or, you know, if you did participate in Camp Nano, how did it go? Did you win? Did you meet your goal? Did you exceed it? Let me know down below. And until next time, I'll see you then.